All right, thanks for watching. And today is all about subsequences, which is really the analog of an express train, but for sequences. Here's what I mean. So consider a sequence Sn, which you can really think of as a train that goes to certain cities, such as Pi Angeles, Liouville, San Francisco, and Infianapolis. Then a subsequence is just an express train, meaning that it goes to the same cities as Sn, but doesn't stop at every city. So for instance, here's an example of a subsequence. So the first stop is the second city. The second stop of the express train is the third city. The third stop, Sn3, is the fifth city, and the fourth stop, Sn4 is the eighth city. And in fact, that's what an express train is. So that's what a subsequence is. Namely, for every value of k, you associate a certain value of your sequence Sn. So subsequence, it's basically a sequence of the form Snk, where k is an natural number where, again, for every value of k, you associate a value of the sequence, Sn. In other words, all that this is saying is every stop of the express train also has to be a stop of the original train, but the express train could skip a couple of stop stops. And not only that, it seems a bit silly to require, but it's very important. Notice the second stop of the express train has to come after the first stop. The third stop of the express train has to come after the second stop, etc., etc. In other words, the express train is not going backwards. And a way to express that is simply as saying N1, so the first stop comes before the second stop, comes before the third stop, etc., etc. So that's really what a subsequence is. For every k, you associate a value of your sequence, and we have the, this sequence, subsequences moving forward. Okay, and now let me do a couple of examples before I actually give another definition. So. So first example, consider the following sequence, Sn is minus 1 to the n times n squared. And this one just jumps back and forth between n squared and minus n squared. So the first value is minus 1, the second value is 4, the third value is minus 9, the fourth value is 16, and then minus 25, and then 36, etc., etc. So it becomes... Again, minus 1, 4, minus 9, and 16, minus 25, 36, that way. And consider the following subsequence. So we want to stay positive here. So in other words, the subsequence is just all the positive terms of Sn. So in other words, consider the following subsequence Snk. Define s and k as being the kth positive term. Of Sn. So, for instance, Sn1, so the first express stop, is the second value of this sequence, S2, which is 4. The second express stop, Sn2, is uh, the fourth term, S4, which is 16. The third stop, Sn3, is S6, which is 36. And I don't know if you notice a pattern, so Sn1 is S2, Sn2, it's 4, which is 2 times 2, Sn3 is 6, which is 2 times 3, and in general, uh, Snk, S and K is just S of 2K. You see double of K. Like here, 6 is double of 3. 
and that becomes minus 1 to the 2k times 2k squared. Okay? That's just the definition of Sn, but this is even, so this becomes plus 1, so in the end we have 4k squared, which makes sense. For instance, 36, it's 4 times 3 squared. But this is not why we're here today, uh, because this, it's not, it's, of course, it's great to find general values of the subsequence, but that's not the point, really. Uh, the point is to notice something here, namely, notice, there's something more general happening. Well, what is S and K? What is S of 2K? But notice, 2K is just a function of K. So in other words, we can write this as s of sigma k, where sigma k is just a doubling function. So it's a function that takes k as its input and spits out 2k. And in fact, if you think about this, it turns out every subsequence has, of, has this form, namely it's of the form S of some function of K. Because again, for every K, I give you a certain value of your subsequence. And um, that's really good. It's kind of a dynamic approach to subsequences. So really what is happening here? So what is a subsequence? Well, you start with K. So think either 1, 2, or in general k. Then this function sigma, sometimes called a selection function, selects a special value of n, which here it's really all even uh, n's, like 2, 4, and k, which is so 2k. K becomes 2K. And then what is our sequence? Well, remember, sequence is really a function from the natural numbers to the real numbers. So this S, so the sequence Sn, really takes, for instance, 2 as its input and spits out S2. It takes 4 as its input and spits out S4. And in general, takes 2K as its input and spits out S of 2K. And in fact, that's really what a subsequence is. It's just a composition of two functions, namely, first of all, sigma, that goes from k to 2k, and then our sequence s, which goes from 2k to s of 2k. And so that's really a subsequence. So s of sigma k, which we would just like to think of, s of nk. Okay. Uh, very good, and now let's do another example. So again, if you want, that is the official definition of a subsequence, but uh, we won't really deal with that actually much. Um, but still, it's good to know. And consider now the following subsequence, which we may have seen before. So let Sn be sine of uh, pi, o o pi n over 2. So close almost pi n. And then, what does that look like? So you have the unit circle, and you start at the pi over 2. So you start at 1, and then 0, and then minus 1, and then 0, and it cycles back and forth. So the sequence itself looks like that. 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0. A beautiful and periodic. And there are many subsequences of Sn. We could choose uh, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 minus 1. <laughs> Sounds like I'm a robot. But there is, actually many of them, but there's a very interesting subsequence. For instance, consider the following, 1, 1, and then just 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So one example of a subsequence of an express train is S and K, which is 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. And why is that one interesting? Because notice this one is convergent. It converges to 0. 
So even though this sequence SN doesn't converge, it can't make up, make up its mind, there is a convergent subsequence. And in fact, we'll see under some very mild assumptions later, every sequence will have a convergent subsequence. So, strictly speaking, every bounded sequence will have a convergent subsequence. So this is not an atypical scenario. That said, even though this sequence doesn't converge but has a convergent subsequence, let's prove something related, namely, if the sequence itself converges, then every subsequence must converge to the same limit. In other words, let's quickly prove the following fact. Play. If Sn converges to S, so here as n goes to infinity, then for any subsequence, Snk converges to S as well. Except careful, here is the convergence as n goes to infinity, here is the convergence as k to in goes to infinity. And in some sense this makes sense, okay, because um, basically if the train itself goes to a certain destination, hopefully the express train will also go to the same destination. Otherwise it would be a very weird express train. Um, and the proof relies on a little fact, which I hope is kind of obvious to you, but fact for all k, um, nk is greater or equal to k. And let me illustrate that. So what is uh, k? k is just the k stop of your original train. S n k is the k stop of your express train. And this is just saying express trains are faster than regular trains. In other words, the k stop of the express train should come after the k stop of your original train. Otherwise, why would it be called an express train? It wouldn't make sense. Okay, and here's now the proof, and this is one you can prove by induction, but here's the proof of the claim. And again, uh, strictly speaking, the proof of the claim should also make sense because what are we saying? Well, we, we know that there's some threshold such that after the threshold, the um, regular train is in our uh, good region. So we know, uh, let's say, after that threshold, let's say SK is in your good region, but then the express train, which is faster, should also be in your good region. Because you see, everything after the threshold is in your good region. So where stuff is less than epsilon. But let's just formalize it, and the proof is actually as quick as a picture. So uh, let epsilon be given then since Sn converges to S, there is some threshold such that if you're after the threshold, and there's a reason I'll use K, so if K is greater than capital N, then uh, Sk minus S is less than epsilon, but if with that same n, with that same capital N, if, let's say, k, again, is still bigger than capital N, then nk comes after k, so it's also bigger than capital N. k, which is, again, the express stop comes after the regular stop, which is already past the threshold. So what we get is nk is bigger than capital N, and therefore s of nk minus s is less than epsilon. And then if you think about it, then we're done, because what did we have to show? We had to show that if epsilon is given, there is some threshold such that if you're after the threshold, 
then you have SNK minus S is less than epsilon. All right, thank you very much.